Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to talk about the leftover, um, the remaining topics of microcytic anemia. Not so important, um, but uh, in microcytic anemia, whenever there is microcytic anemia, guys, remember like two very important topics are, uh, which you have to cover is uh, iron deficiency anemia, which I already told you that is the most important anemia, most common anemia, no matter it is what type of anemia as a whole. Uh, in the topic of anemia, iron deficiency anemia is a very is a very important topic. So, uh, as I told you, whenever like how we approach the patients, whenever any anyone comes with anemia, we check their MCV, and if the MCV is lower, uh, which means it is microcytic uh, and it is hypochromic, like MCH, uh, mean corpuscular hemoglobin is low. So, uh, we start think started thinking about iron deficiency anemia. And the first thing which we which we send the patients for is to check either the patient is having what you can say uh, the iron I, I we send the patient for iron studies and if the iron studies come back as normal um, then uh, the second thing which we think of is thalassemia so uh, now uh, th uh, why now thalassemia is important uh, because uh, after iron deficiency anemia one of uh, like one of the causes of anemia can be thalassemia and uh, that's why like that that is the second thing we check uh, if someone don't have anemia uh, but like uh, thalassemia we are, i'm not going to discuss over here because you know uh, we already had discussed in uh, thalassemia in our pediatric lectures and uh, what kind of thalassemia these patients are having is basically um, like which don't have any clinical um, presentation like just the def uh, there is missing one allele or like these patients are these people are asymptomatic and they spend their life many of these people they don't know uh, they, they have uh, thalassemia so they, they remain fine uh, but what they develop is like very mild type of uh, what you can say anemia okay so uh, uh, of course like I'm not going to discuss that topic again here uh, rather I will just just few few minutes on uh, the rest of the anemias or microcytic anemias so uh, as you can see here it is anemia of chronic inflammation now when we are discussing this anemia of chronic inflammation the first thing you must know what are the inflammatory conditions or the chronic inflammatory conditions uh, there can they, they can be many uh, chronic um, inflammatory conditions okay inflammatory conditions uh, there are many conditions which runs chronically okay in in, in the body uh, so simply um, for example if someone have infections any any type of infections which are uh, chronically running okay uh, malignancies uh, malignancies okay uh, they, they are the chronic conditions as well um, as well as you know there are now many inflammatory conditions like rheumatological conditions uh, of course like many of you don't know about rheumatological conditions yet but like when we will study rheumatology uh, of course like uh, you 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 will be having having an idea you know uh, why rheumatological diseases they 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 present in this way so rheumatological diseases are there um, and any other condition, any other condition related to body which stays chronically, uh, it could be liver failure, uh, it could be uh, renal failure, okay, uh, very common conditions can be there like, you know, diabetes mellitus can be there uh, and so on and so forth. So simply uh, what I'm talking about is all the chronic conditions which uh, stays like, which affect the body. So now what happens? Uh, what is important here how there can be anemia uh, okay uh, it's not important like all the patients who have uh, anemia of chronic diseases they are going to develop microcytic anemia and um, some of the people they do develop normocytic anemia as well okay so uh, anemia of chronic diseases can give microcytic as well as normocytic so uh, remember guys a very important point to remember whenever there is microcytic anemia the first thing is iron deficiency anemia microcytic anemia okay uh, the first thing that should come into in your mind should be uh, iron deficiency anemia okay iron deficiency and 
uh, after that if someone iron studies come back normal think about thalassemia okay and these one uh, anemia of chronic diseases you know uh, like they, they are not so common but they can occur okay so it should be in your differential simply so basically what happened um, uh, like uh, in my previous lecture when I was introducing you know iron deficiency anemia and uh, I'm, I'm, I was giving what you can say the introduction of anemia um, uh, basically there is a uh, what you can say uh, what happens in this in, in these patients is there is uh, impaired uh, iron utilization in the body okay utilization in the body uh, why this uh, in, uh, iron utilization is impaired is simply because uh, um, uh, because simply uh, there is a peptide called as hepcidin okay uh, I talk about this thing before uh, like uh, you know uh, whenever there is any inflammatory conditions uh, it leads to increase hepcidin in the body okay so simply inflammatory conditions uh, basically uh, increases you can say uh, hepcidin production okay uh, so hepcidin products remember like hepcidin hep means liver so of course you know this one is produced by uh, liver so hepcidin production is increased okay and uh, due to that uh, the iron you know they get trapped inside the enterocytes as well as the macrophages okay which lead to uh, which lead to trapping of iron inside enterocytes and macrophages okay so this is the thing which is going on so uh, now um, simply uh, this is the mechanism uh, why the iron utilization is impaired because the iron is getting trapped inside the enterocytes as well as the macrophages. Enterocytes means of course the cells of the uh, intestines. Okay, so now uh, what happens is uh, when when this thing occur uh, and and the patients you know they 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 are in chronic conditions. So what happens is like they have reduced plasma levels of iron. Okay, uh, they, they, they don't have iron deficiency, but uh, the iron regulation in the body is not working nice. So that's why, you know, they have a reduced level of plasma uh, inside the plasma. And if I know iron is present in the plasma, of course, uh, it cannot be used to make RBCs or hemoglobin simply. So what is going on? The iron is trapping inside the enterocytes and macrophages. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, this is the, you can say, the pathophysiology. Uh, rest, guys, of course, like, there will be signs and symptoms of anemia, but, of course, there will be no plumber vision syndrome, Vincent syndrome, there will be no nail changes, and uh, all these things, okay? Uh, they can occur, but, like, in very severe conditions. So, uh, remember, guys, uh, anemia of... Uh, Chronic disease is a diagnosis of exclusion, which I uh, which I explain you many times. Like there are certain conditions when we have to diagnose, uh, we have to rule out all the conditions uh, which can present in the same way. Uh, for example, you know where whenever uh, we diagnose someone with uh, IBDs, uh, inflammatory uh, sorry uh, IBS uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, we have to exclude number of conditions and then you know. Uh, that is the only one which is left so again this is a diagnosis of exclusion okay so of course like when you will take history you will found the patient have any of these conditions like infections malignancies diabetes renal failure liver failure uh, anything is like anything can be there so i told you it is not always microcytic it can be normocytic it can be normal chronic okay uh, not always microcytic type but whenever it is a severe type okay so whenever uh, anyone have severe type of have severe anemia of chronic anemia due to chronic disease uh, it is always 
microcytic uh, hypochromic okay so uh, simply uh, in very mild form it remains normocytic normochronic uh, even in sometimes moderate form but in severe form of course it is hypochromic microcytic type of anemia okay so <clears throat> uh, when of course like we go for an iron studies and uh, we found that you know that because the iron is trapped so they have like serum iron is low they have like low total iron binding capacity uh, but one thing guys their ferritin is not decreased rather their ferritin is normal okay so simply uh, you can say uh, in investigations you can found that they have all the picture uh, like uh, iron deficiency anemia except uh, ferritin uh, ferritin will be high or normal ferritin will be high or normal okay so uh, like this is the diagnostic and the difference between uh, from you can say uh, anemia uh, iron deficiency anemia uh, now how we treat this condition guys because there is a lot of causes which call like uh, underlying causes so of course treat the underlying cause okay in these patients so treat the underlying cause in these patients uh, that is the first thing you have to do okay and uh, uh, like uh, of course uh, do you think we have to give iron of course no use of iron because they do have ferritin uh, in their bodies okay so basically there is no benefit uh, of giving iron in these patients okay um, uh, one thing here which I want to mention is like in cases of renal failure there is less level of erythropoietin in the body because erythropoietin is produced by the kidneys so in that cases of course we, we can provide them with erythropoietin okay uh, otherwise uh, simply uh, this condition cannot be treated by given iron because even if you will give iron you know they are going to trap more like more and more iron will be trapped in the enterocytes as well as uh, what you can say in the macrophages so uh, erythropoietin can can only be given in renal failure uh, that's it otherwise there is no uh, need to treat uh, with iron okay just treat the underlying cause a uh, few words about sideroblastic anemia as well okay uh, like these anemias as i told you uh, they are they are not so important but as you know they are the they can cause uh, uh, microcytic anemia so i'm just like uh, get taking some time giving some time to them so uh, now again you know this is very uncommon very uncommon type okay not not common like you can say uh, iron deficiency or vitamin b12 deficiency anemia and as I told you when I, when I was explaining you the how the RBCs look like, I was explaining you that, you know, uh, in some of the cells there is iron particles or iron uh, granules are there which are stained. Uh, when, we, when we see the RBCs, you know, they can stain and they, 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 they give like basophilic uh, staining uh, type of look. So, uh, like... Uh, it can be present in many normal people as well okay uh, so uh, simply uh, like uh, this iron containing uh, granules are present in cytoplasm in many of the healthy individual you know when they are present they they, they are present in the form of small small particles okay uh, and they are like uh, scattered in the uh, cytoplasm so simply you can say these iron containing uh, granules okay uh, are scattered in normal uh, or healthy individuals okay uh, but uh, uh, what happened is uh, sometimes uh, you can say uh, sometimes you know uh, what happened that you know there is iron deposits uh, in mitochondria okay mitochondria ch O N D R I A. Okay, uh, and in this, when when they are when they are deposited in mito mitochondria, uh, basically what happened is you know they they form a ring type like they appear like ring shaped. Okay, they appear ring shaped. So when we see this thing, we say that the patient have 
uh, sideroblastic uh, anemia okay this is the hallmark of sideroblastic anemia so uh, now uh, th there are many causes of this condition like uh, hereditary causes are there um, idiopathic causes are there okay uh, sometimes you know it is present in some sort of leukemia sometimes you know uh, it is due to drugs okay and what kind of drugs so okay it could be genetic uh, you can say quickly it could be genetic causes it may have uh, uh, idiopathic causes okay uh, and sometimes it is due to drugs and whenever it is due to drugs remember it is reversible okay uh, because once we stop the drugs you know it is going to uh, reverse the changes what kind of drugs isoniazid you know we give it for tuberculosis treatment very important we give it for a long period of time so that these patients can develop um, cytoplastic anemia uh, then you know alcohol people lead poisoning okay copper poisoning though not so common these days okay and hypothyroidism so and uh, not so common but remember these things like th these things can be present arrest simply anemia symptoms from my first lecture if you remember anemia symptoms guys it gives you anemia symptoms that's it when you when we investigate them okay uh, what we found uh, all the tests uh, will come back as normal okay all all the iron tests you can say except uh, what happened is uh, like even their ferritin will be as a normal or increased uh, except what you can say you will see sidro sidroblasts okay this is the only presentation in these patients okay so uh, the only thing is uh, we see sidroblasts in these patients okay um, um, now uh, uh, what what can be given simply what how how we can treat these patients okay if the anemia is severe treat anemia okay if the cause is reversible treat that reversible causes I told you many okay and what else uh, uh, yes, uh, in X-linked, when the cause is genetic, then uh, we can give them for, okay, you can say genetic causes. Uh, we can give vitamin B6. Okay, in genetic causes, we can give vitamin B6. So this is the um, treatment for sideroblastic anemia. Uh, the last thing, guys, uh, one of the cause uh, uh, of uh, microcytic anemia is called as lead poisoning. Okay, uh, lead poisoning is n itself is not common these days. Why? Uh, because if you know that you know lead poisoning uh, basically occurs. Uh, Previously, uh, when most of the pa paints, you know, in the home, uh, they used to use, they, they used uh, lead before many, many, many years. And what happens is uh, that uh, when the people, uh, they, like, they, they put that paint in their home. So, uh, sometimes the babies, for example, you know, they, 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 they can, they keep on eating for, like, chronically. Um, like uh, there are like many other causes but nowadays like simply it is not so common okay so uh, like simply uh, one of the thing you will find in the books is like you know suspect lead anemia uh, in any of the child especially you know 
when they live in the homes which are built in 1970s or before that why like basically at the end of 1970s they they realized this thing and you know they changed all the paint industry they stopped using the lead thing in that okay so of course like now it is quite irrelevant okay so simply like anyone who have lead poisoning i i i'm going to tell you the features you know uh, they develop lead lines you know lead lines in gingiva so when we like you can ask them to open their mouths and you can see like lead lines in this thing one and even uh, we can see uh, these lines on uh, the epiphysis uh, of long bones okay uh, of course on x-ray okay so we can see this thing um, and uh, basically you know lead poisoning can be remembered by the mnemonic lead l is for lead lines e is for encephalopathy uh, encephalopathy as well as uh, a is for abdominal pain okay and uh, also and anemia okay and D is for drops uh, basically wrist drop or what you can say uh, foot drop okay uh, what, what is this wrist drop or foot drop is uh, uh, like you know when your radial nerve is not uh, what you can say working so you cannot extend your wrist or you cannot uh, dorsiflex uh, your your feet okay uh, because that nerve is damaged so this is the thing you know these are the features uh, so simply guys you know uh, what they check is the lead level in the blood and any level which is uh, uh, more than 50 microgram per liter per deciliter you know it gives started giving symptoms symptoms I told you already and uh, how they treat a diagnosis is done on x-rays okay and treatment is simply uh, chelation therapy okay so uh, what what they do they give uh, remember like these are the agents which are used basically for any kind of chelation so we can give them dimercaprol okay or you can also give them EDTA uh, like these are these are the agents which we give on many what you can say heavy metal poisonings okay to, to different patients so like that's all about what you can say uh, uh, that, that, that that's all about uh, um, microcytic anemia okay so uh, then there is uh, uh, what you, okay so I, I'm going to uh, start with the new lecture uh, for uh, microcytic anemias